With that, I want to ask each of these commissioners to come up. We'll start with the chair, Dan Camp, uh, to, to say uh, whatever they'd like to say, but with a particular focus on what do you think was the most successful accomplishment of 2018? We're going to we'll talk about that, and then we're going to move forward to 2019. What do you think is the most successful accomplishment and something that you engaged in personally that brought you the most satisfaction this past year as we approach the state of Beaver County? Join me in welcoming Commissioner Dan Camp. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd first like to welcome and thank the Beaver County Chamber of Commerce for giving the Board of Commissioners a chance to speak to their membership. There's such a wide variety of audience here. We have labor, we have uh, the professional services, and, and it's exciting to be able to stand up here and have a stage to talk about the future of Beaver County. Um, thank you to John for coming down to moderate. I understand you, like you said, you might have some other opportunities, but we appreciate you being here and the many sponsors that make this uh, event possible each year. Before I get to answer John's first question, I'd like to introduce several of our department heads that we have here. Um, if you could just raise your hand, because without these department heads, county government really doesn't move. The commissioners get to take a lot of credit for things that happen throughout Beaver County, but without the people working behind the scenes, we're not going to move forward like we need to. So we have uh, our Beaver County solicitor, Garen Fidelis. <laughs> Director of Elections, Doreen Manditti. Human Resources Director, Sydney Shaw. Beaver County Behavior Health Director, Gerard Mike. Our new Children and Youth Services Director, Leslie Hallis. Our Community Development Director, Lisa Signor over here. And our Chief Clerk, Cynthia Cook, who's here with us today. Um, during the first two and a half years of this term, everything was thrown at us. Uh, we weren't running Beaver County, we were reacting and not leading. And now I'm confident to sit here in front of the Beaver County Chamber's membership to tell you that we are running Beaver County. We are getting back to governing and meeting the needs and responsibilities to our residents throughout Beaver County no matter what they are. I look forward to being able to answer any questions. And I encourage you, as John said, if you do not write a question down, we'll be here after. Stop and see us, ask any questions we need. Um, I'm happy that this is the first question you get to ask us, John. And, um, I, and as I stand here, I'm not going to sit here and say this is something that I did because this is something the board did. This is something Lance Grable did, uh, our planning redevelopment. But you know, one of the most successful things I think we're going to see out of out of 2018 come to fruition in 2019 is the potential mini casino that we talked about at the airport chamber of commerce not too long ago um, they reached out to beaver county in april of 2018 because of the developers that we have in beaver county with mr nardelli and mr betters and all the other developers that believe in beaver county and continue to invest money in beaver county we were able to find them a site within 24 hours and we had a very small area to pick that from. Um, so with, with the potential casino coming, we're still waiting on the, uh, the uh, Pennsylvania Gaming Control Board to approve their license. I would have to say that's probably one of the biggest achievements that we've seen in Beaver County in 2018. It's going to bring 600 jobs, it's going to bring 300 construction jobs, and not only do I think it's going to develop the corridor of Interset 376 and the Pennsylvania Turnpike, um, I think it's going to develop and go all the way down into Chippewa and Darlington. So with that being said, that's probably the f most important thing that we accomplished in 2018. So uh, I'm going to get off the stage. Also, I would like to recognize before uh, we have former Commissioner Joe Spanik here today. And <laughs> our former legislator of the 15th District, Jim Christiana, is with us today as well. So you know, a lot of things that happened in Beaver County prior to my uh, first term was thankful to these guys and, and the leadership that they put in throughout Beaver County and, and down in the Washington County for Jim. So I appreciate the opportunity to speak today and I look forward to answering any questions. Thank you, Dan. This guy had a minute 20 to spare. I like that. Let's see if the others beat it. 
Join me in welcoming, again, for a quick retrospective of what he thinks is the best uh, accomplishments in 2018 and something he took personal satisfaction with, Commissioner Tony Amadeo. Aren't these really exciting times in Beaver County? I never thought we would have the things happen to us that we have in the last four to five years. It's a long process, but I'm so glad that it's uh, moving on and that we're doing such a great job managing it with the labor unions and, and keeping our people here working. Uh, if you look in the program, they put my high school graduation picture in there. <laughs> But at that time, that was actually my first term picture. And I do remember going to a training that we had at, at Hershey Hotel. Can you believe that? The county commissioners training at the Hershey Hotel. And at that Hershey uh, Hotel training, they taught us five things that we must do as a county commissioner. The first one was protecting children. These are the, the main things that county government has to attend to. The second one is serving families. That's domestics, mental health, emergency services. The third one is securing justice. Thus, the, the courthouse. Uh, number four was managing emergencies. And, and in the past term and a half, we built a brand new 911 center in Ambridge, hoping that that would spur uh, development in Ambridge. And finally, <laughs> the one that's really <laughs> taking a lot of our time, safeguarding elections. Uh, unfunded mandates are fantastic, except <laughs> on the other end of them. Uh, in addition to that, I found out that there are five other things that county commissioners have to do and have to do very well. If you don't do these very well, you're going to be gone. Number one is managing the budget and making sure you have the correct figures with the correct amounts. And knowing how to manage those revenues is very, very important, as well as being cognizant of how well we spend those expenditures. Managing the pension program. Beaver County, even with the downturn in, in the stock market, is 100% funded today. And that's not with the rise that's occurring today. With the big loss that we occurred last month, we still were 100% funded. That's incredible, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm proud to be part of that. Negotiating contracts. Negotiating contracts are never fun. But it's something that we have to do. We're in the process right now of negotiating seven out of nine contracts for the, for the county. And it's important that we treat our employees fair and that they treat us fair. So again, that's very, very important. Running the day-to-day -day operations. My, my two counterparts will tell you I have a saying that I say all the time, and that is every day is a new adventure. Every single day is a new adventure. The fifth one is planning a comprehensive plan and implementing that plan. Uh, those of you that came to our uh, meeting that we had at the Wooden Angel uh, about two weeks ago, laid out what our last comprehensive plan provided and it explained how we completed that comprehensive plan. And now we're going to be in a process with this implementation plan to bring more people involved so that we can get more people to tell us exactly what you want to do and how we're going to do it. As far as the answer to your question, I'm talking like a politician going around the circle to get to your answer. I concur with Dan, uh, the casino I think the newspaper article said jackpot. We had two big wins in one term. The beginning of our term, I'll never forget, uh, my wife, I was in the shower. My wife knocked on the door, opened the door, she says, Tony, you, gotta, you have a phone call. I said, I'm in the shower. She said, you better take this call. And that was the, the call that we got at 6.30 6 in the morning, telling us that, uh, the Shell Corporation chose Beaver County, the Beaver County site. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of our accomplishments. I, I remember as a kid, the first major uh, renaissance that I saw was sitting on a riverbank at the age of 12, 13 years old, 
and watching them dam up the river, pump the river out, and fill it with gravel, slag, and at the end, some very, very precious metals that we found were actually in there once they dug them back up. So with that, I'm going to sit down and uh, again, thank you sponsors, thank you everyone that helped us uh, pay for this event. Uh, I missed the last event, I, I call myself the $200,000 man because I, I went through three procedures, uh, I had uh, some uh, heart work done, I had uh, a back surgery, but I'm back. The only bad part about it, I thought when I went into surgery I was going to get taller when I came out. <laughs> But as you can see, that hasn't happened. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tony. Thank you very much. He only went five seconds over. That's all right. <laughs> Join me in welcoming our third commissioner on the Board of Commissioners, Commissioner Sandy Eggley. County is an interest to a good many people. So my background, I come from business development and uh, engineering, and my priorities were to increase the, uh, the return on investment. And that perspective has led me to evaluate Beaver County finances from a business-oriented perspective, to urge and change county's financial tra trajectory. I believe in government transparency, and it's important to, to me that I am accessible and not, not only to the residents that I serve, but to the press and to let them know my vote, vote points and why I'm voting the way that I am. So I attend many events in the county and the region to speak, but most importantly, to listen. The past three years have been an enormous learning experience for me. I've learned politics are not like anything that I have ever experienced. The backdoor men's club is real, the corruption is real, it's all about who you know, your last name, how you can work the system, and it's regularly discussed in the halls of the courthouse as a matter of fact like. The dysfunction of county government is well documented in the papers, the local radio station, but the most taboo and controversial discussions happen openly in a blog spot on the web called the Beaver Countyan, run by an independent investigative journalist. But as someone reminds me all the time, I wasn't drafted. I ran for this position, and I'm grateful for it. I see it as a true honor to be your voice. I've done my very best to bring factual information to bear on decisions and to make that information available to you. It all gets back to the reason why I resigned from a perfectly good job from an engineering company. I wanted to make Beaver County better. That was my only motivation. I knew that with my experience, I could help downsize government, selectively adjust budgets, headcounts, and improve efficiency and structure government to secure the people have a more cost-effective way of doing business. Since this is my last county, state of the county, um, most of you have heard, I am not running again. Um, I would like to share with you a brief snapshot of what I think is uh, our greatest accomplishment of this board. As soon as we were elected, uh, we immediately opened up that past budget and passed it. Um, this board passed the new one, and we cut millions of dollars out of that budget. No more than six months later, we offered an early retirement plan that downsized our government by more than 70 people. This left a gaping hole in the roster of directors who had many years of experience with the county that they took with them. It took more than a year to interview and find the most qualified people to put in those positions. And I'm very proud of those new hires who are leading the county in a positive direction. I helped draft nearly a half a million dollar grant from DCED that was used to hire an outside consultant to analyze our county finances. The plan exposed years of neglect and the financial state of that neglect. 
The report is issued last fall and it can be found on our county website. We refinance millions of dollars in bonds to ease the debt burden. The county is more than $120 million in debt. That's more than three times the average of debt carried by other counties of our size. We cut nearly a half a million dollars in contracts, outsourcing some of those to bring them in-house. The contracts were went on for years, unchecked, and absolutely no work product to show for it. We implemented pretometry, a flyover the county, to have the images compared to our tax roll, to the images that were built. This exposed many buildings that have never been reported and are now added to our tax roll. The county's at a, tip, pip, pip, at a pivotal point. The last three years, we've landed a $6 billion investment by Shell that brings six to 7,000 high-paying jobs, numerous pipelines, ancillary businesses, a casino, Columbia Gas Training Center, increasing our hotels to nearly 12, expansion of Heritage Valley Healthcare, Cancer Treatment Center, St. Barnabas, who has bought the 175 um, acres and used to be the home of Michael Baker, and the mall was purchased for $24.5 million. PennDOT has invested over $200 million in Beaver County in the last three years. Wrapping up, these last three years are important to me, knowing that elections have consequences. The 2019 election will give the people of Beaver County a choice to continue down the path we have historically been or change the direction. What people choose to do with that information will be seen in November. Thank you. Sandy, thank you very much. <laughs> the commissioner here took my folder. Ooh. <laughs> I think take pens too. <laughs> That's all right. I could probably manage without this, but it's always good to have a prop. Well, thank you, commissioners, very much. Uh, we're going to go forward and have you all sit, if you don't mind, as Sandy just did. We appreciate the comments you made about 2018. Let me just ask you, and again, remind folks, if you want to submit questions, feel free to fill out the cards, and I assume Harry will have somebody, maybe some of the chamber staff, yes, can, can, can grab them and bring them up to me. I have a few questions I'll ask. Let me ask this one now. Just going forward in 2019, what is the most significant challenge that you see this year in 2019 for Beaver County? Dan, we'll start with you. I think, um, as as Commissioner Angley stated, you know, doing the budget year in and year out is, is probably the most difficult. Um, we passed four balanced budgets in three years. As Commissioner stated, we, we reopened the budget when we first took office, but you know we did balance that budget. We balanced the other three. But when we have the, the department heads that we have, it's, it takes the burden off the commissioners. You know, we have a, a financial consultant that comes in now that is doing a good job. And, and as we stated last year, you know, with the budget we passed, it has a, a little bit of a surplus. You can't run county government like a business. We're not here to make money. We're not here to take your tax dollars and have a profit at the end of the day. We're here to continue to provide the services that we provide with at, at the lowest tax burden we can. So running county government like a business doesn't work. So year in and year out, the, business, the biggest um, task is, is probably balancing a, a budget. Commissioner Agley, you agree? Is this a, the major challenge for Beaver County this year? I, I do believe that the budget, well, the budget is primarily, it comes back to us. Um, we're responsible for that. And to be, we have to be highly critical of how we spend your money. And um, that leads to some really good discussions and um, open discussions because it has to happen in public. So um, I encourage you to get involved, to let us know where you want our the money to be spent, and yes, I, I think that um, having that budget process is is probably the most critical of the priorities that commissioners have. <coughs> Commissioner Amadeo, same same question. Do you feel the same way? The budget is the most important issue uh, that you will address in 2019. Yes, 
And, and the reason is, and I've been saying this for the last few years, uh, the government cannot be run like a business. You absolutely cannot do it. There's no profit, there's no income that other than the taxpayers that you have to go to. And I'm not going to raise taxes unless I absolutely have to. I'm not taking money out of somebody's um, income, out of somebody's household, who could, needs that money to buy medicine, to buy food. Let's face it, uh, property tax is the worst tax that our government has. And until that's changed, we have to deal with it. A person that works 30, 40 years, bought a house, made payments on it, owns the house now in the 50th year, they're probably 70 years old, no kids in school, they have to endure the same increases that the, the young people and the middle class people and the, and the um, people that have the money, the affordability to pay the taxes. But the tax is the most unfair. Well, speaking of taxes, let me just ask you, <clears throat> will Beaver County be raising taxes or fees in 2019, yes or no? Right now, uh, I don't think we can answer that question, and if somebody up here wants to say if it's election year, she can. But um, right now, we have to see where we are. We still have an end of the year audit that comes out that shows that we're probably gonna come out a little better than we finished last year. So these numbers are still gonna come in play, and if we had to stay in the county come in October, I'll be able to answer that question, but I think this board is going to continue to do everything they can for the entire year of 2019 not to raise taxes, because that is not our goal. If we were to raise taxes that was requested back in 2017 or 2016 for 2017 budget, we wouldn't be having this conversation today because we would have been flush with more cash than what we have. But we chose not to raise taxes by 5.6 mils because we didn't want to do that to the taxpayers of Beaver County. So right now, I cannot answer that question. Fair. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, basically, you're not going to say, read my lips, no new taxes. No. <laughs> you won't make that pledge until you know more about your budget. Tony, is the same for you, or are you going to say no new taxes? There's a lot of contingencies. Uh, the, way, the way the budget's being projected right now, uh, unless some massive uh, thing occurs, I would say no. But we don't know until we find out the status of our uh, court case on reassessment that's pending right now in the state Supreme Court. I mean, we're, we have to wait until April, um, and, and if we do, if they're going to hear our case, then that could, that could go on until till the end of the year. But if they decide not to hear our case, then what we'll do is we'll have to get back, it'll be sent back to the lower court, and once it goes back to the lower, lower court, uh, hopefully we, our solicitor can negotiate with the judge to come out with uh, the changing of the dates because those dates have already passed and to come up with some solution. And then we'll have to find out how much it's going to cost for us to finance the reassessment. What people don't understand is we're talking between eight and $10 million for a reassessment. And the fact that we're building a new cracker plant could change it after it's completely done. Uh, you all know property rep values are rising through the ceiling as, we, as I'm speaking here. <laughs> It's incredible what's happening in Beaver County. So the answer, we, we can't give you that answer yet. <coughs> that couple of red, it's contingent upon what <coughs> Governor Wolf says today about how much money he's going to give us to pay for the um, voting machines. Right. Well, stay tuned. We'll have that on Kitty K tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy, what do you think? Do you think this commission is going to raise taxes in uh, 2019? I would agree Hold with... The with I, you, you need the mic. I would agree with Dan and Tony. I, I don't need to repeat what they just said. Yeah, good. Here's a question. It is said that Pittsburgh ends at the airport. Beaver County missed the opportunity for economic development when the airport expanded in the 1990s. With new renovations at the airport, it's a billion dollar plan that will be announced very shortly. Actually, the, it's been announced, but they're going to unveil the uh, the uh, drawings and everything else come end of this month. With new renovations at the airport, how will the commissioners promote 
Beaver County to attract new businesses. Are you involved in one way or the other with this new airport? And what does it mean for Beaver County? Anyone want to take that? Not the airport in itself, but the three of us are involved in SPC, which is the Southwest Planning Commission. And we review those plans. And I'm actually a secretary treasurer, which means I'm going to be moving up through the chairs. And hopefully, if I get reelected, I can end up chairman of the 10 counties in SPC, inclusive of the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, we've always said, you, know, you look around, you drop a pin in Pittsburgh, you go, I mean, at the airport, you go all the way around the airport, and there's businesses everywhere except the, the western northwest corridor. And that's because we weren't on the map. Uh, we, we lost a great man a little while ago, a man that uh, was from an earlier time, but he was for our time. And I learned so much from this young, this gentleman. And I'm going to miss him dearly, but I remember going to Pittsburgh when I was young, when I was first elected, when I looked like I did in that picture. There. <coughs> Sitting with the gentleman, with Mr. Spanik, and I can't remember if it was called Tri-Cap or if it was called uh, Tri-County, but we would speak, and, and Mr. Shaw, who's the, the gentleman I'm talking about, would constantly talk about Route 60 and how we need to make that an interstate. And we followed through, and he worked uh, his backside off. He touched every contact that he had, and the man had a very lot of contacts. Well, and he brought it to fruition, and it put us on the map. Is what I'm, my point. Once we got on the map, when when companies in California would look at the Beaver County map, they saw Interstate 376. So companies were able to see where Beaver County was. Before, it was just little segments of highways, 2230, Route 60. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it is the road goes north to south, and it's called east to west. Who <laughs> <laughs> far? Welcome to Beaver County. Well, the questioner is essentially asking, though, is there going to be different this time with this new billion-dollar expenditure at the airport than it was 25 years ago? Dan, from your perspective, I mean, is there, are the commissioners going to be involved in some way? I mean, the truth is, we are closer to the airport from here than downtown Pittsburgh is, right? So we have correspondence with the airport. If, that, if that's the question, uh, I don't think we have a seat at the table right now. And I, I know we had this discussion at the airport uh, chamber of commerce not too long ago about it would be nice to see a representative, whether it was a commissioner or someone throughout Beaver County, have a seat at the table, but. On, on the other hand, we do a great job, I think, with our chamber, with the partnership, with our tourism, to advertise and talk about how close proximity we are to the Pittsburgh International Airport. I mean, from Center Township, my house, it takes 15 minutes to get there, and you never think we're next to an international airport. So, do we have correspondence? Yes. Do we have a seat at the table? No. Sandy, I know economic development's kind of been your forte. What, what's your thoughts on this one? Yes, yes. So we're, we're involved um, quite extensively with the Pittsburgh Regional Alliance. And when you talk about an international airport, you have to talk about regional effect. And that's where the conversation takes place, in that room. And then they just put out a, uh, a survey as to what you would like to see. And I'll tell you, the results were pretty low. So I'm going to ask you, if you don't know where it is, I, I would like to point it to you. It's, on, it's called Smart Moves. And um, you can, uh, we'll put it on a link on, on our page so you can try and fill it out. Because we want to know <coughs> what you think is most important and incorporate that into the plan. But that, I think it's a, it's a regional discussion, not a Beaver County discussion. Good. Uh, here's a question. If the casino is the greatest achievement of the last year, what plan, if any, is there to mitigate the immense social cost and generation of human services needs of the casino? Anybody? So, so right now, uh, Beaver County spends about $90 million a year, $90 million plus a year on services for drug and alcohol, gambling addiction, any kind of addiction. We have that already. Uh, so, you know, working closely with the casino, they offer and they'll work with our behavior health or Beaver County kind of behavior health to mitigate any kind of needs that our residents need throughout Beaver County. 
Uh, I, I, like as Commissioner Amy said, this, this will probably be a regional discussion because we're not only going to have residents of Beaver County visiting this location, it's going to be Eastern Ohio, Northern uh, Pennsylvania. You know, but I think once, once we have this for sure, these will be discussions that we have to have with our state representatives, our state um, senators, and even to the federal level. But we, we have everything. Beaver County has a rich history of our behavior health, and, and we offer these already. So you know, until you're in that situation, you probably don't realize that Beaver County has this. So, but when this comes to, to fruition, we, we will have these conversations regionally, not just in Beaver County. Let me rephrase the question just a little bit, because I think most of us can see the upsides, the positives of having this casino in Beaver County. Do any of the commissioners believe there are some downsides to things that you should worry about or be planning for in the months ahead? There, there's downsides to everything. There's a good and a bad. You know how many calls we get from outsiders about the Shell Cracker plan? I mean, I, I, I remember when I was a kid and the mills were going and uh, I was nine years old before I realized snow didn't have black specks in it. But the people worked. I mean, there's downsides to everything. So what are the downsides on the casino, Tony, that well, worry you? Dealing with uh, gambling addiction and, and dealing with some of the things that happen that are germane to living around the mm -hmm. casino. But one of the good things about that is uh, Big Beaver may end up with a police department when it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. I mean, the infrastructure that's going to be run to this casino can branch off and develop all the surrounding properties. So there's more potential good that's going to come out of this than potential bad. Did you want to respond? Yeah. As, as Commissioner Amadeo said, there is a downside with gambling addiction. But I think one of the things that, that we need to realize is if you were at the public hearing in Big B. Roberto, this isn't going to just be a casino. This is a destination resort. And they are a good public-private partner. They have a good charitable give-back program, which they are already starting. You know, they're reaching out to the elementary schools. They're reaching out to, to nonprofit organizations. Um, I think whenever the time comes, you know, this, this discussion about the downsides will have to happen. But right now, we have to focus on the positive, and that's growing the Big Beaver corridor of Interstate 376 and the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Sandy, do you have anything to add to that? I covered it. I'm good. You're good. Okay. You're good. Good. Um, let me ask you this question. I'm going to address this one to uh, Commissioner Ackley uh, initially because I remember one of my earliest interviews with you, Sandy, uh, <laughs> after you became commissioner. We t you talked about Riverfront. Uh, yeah. Do you remember? I do. And showed me maps. I do. And the whole notion was that we, you know, we talk, and, and frankly, the media does a lot of it, puts a lot of attention on <coughs> riverfront development in the city of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. But there are lots of riverfronts in this region. And the question is, and this is something I know the Chamber cares a lot about, what's going on with respect to riverfront development in Beaver County? Are you satisfied with what's happened over the last three years? Is there more that you think should happen? Let's pull the mic. Well, government runs very slow. So, um, and not at the pace that I would like, but it is happening. Um, we're looking at trails along the Beaver River. We're looking at opening up um, that, that riverfront property there. Looking at the Ohio River and uh, the Manaka and the Bridgewater and the Rochester side. So that's our kind of our mini point of Beaver County. So looking at doing all of that, um, we are in discussions with DCED to fund that type of development. Uh, we're looking at opening up the Falston Bridge uh, to complete that loop, um, to do a 5K, um, to do bicycle tri uh, trails. So there's a lot of, a lot of things that are happening there. Um, there are changing some zoning laws down uh, along the rivers, and they're bringing these municipalities that, that clash a lot. They don't, they don't come together a lot. We're bringing them together and saying, look, if you want this to succeed, you're going to have to come together and, and work this out. And what I found over the last three years is they're doing a better job at that. And that's when progress will start happening more quickly and getting that funding together. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dan or Tony, do you want to add to uh, that or discuss that at all? Government can't do it all. I mean, we can get grants, we can facilitate um, the private industry, private business to get grants to create the waterfront property. But government can't do it by itself. We just don't have the funds, the availability of funds, other than grant money and pass-through monies that we get from the federal and state government. So we do have the riverfront property. The county uh, got a park. Uh, and uh, we maintain the park right on the river. Uh, it's at its 100-year uh, flood level point, and, uh, it, uh, <coughs> which means it, can't, it won't flood uh, unless we get a massive uh, 100 year rainstorm, apparently, then it might be. But government can't do it. Government can't be involved in every single thing. But most of the time, it, it takes private investment. I mean, we can do private uh, public partnerships, but for the most part, it has to be private. Yeah. Thank you. Dan, did you want to add on Riverfront? Just, just as Commissioner Avery and Commissioner, they, they both made great points. Uh, you know, as Commissioner Avery read a list of things that was accomplished or, or done over the last three years, we can't do it all. But as Commissioner Angley said, discussing the Falston Bridge, we had a group come to us who's rehabbing a different bridge in Beaver County and, and wanted to reopen this as a non-vehicle bridge pedestrian only. And with the outpour of support we got from both sides of the river with the New Brighton and Falston side, that's how things get done. And we're happy to see the, the local government and the communities get involved because that, to be able to do everything, we need to help with the residents throughout Beaver County. So. Good. And, and if I can cite an example, uh, about 18 years ago, Center Township uh, Board of Supervisors, where I was a member at one time, we did the first TIF in Beaver County, a tax incentive financing program, which I think there's about six and a half years left, or two years, I'm sorry, two years left, uh, we borrowed six and a half million dollars, and that was a public-private partnership, where we took the, the land it created the water, the sewer, the infrastructure, the storm sewers, and we created pad ready sites. And once the buildings were built, the additional revenues from the buildings, not the property, not the existing land, but the new, new buildings paid for that TIF district. So it was like a, even though it was a private investment entity, it was a public private partnership to get the pads ready, to get the development ready. And we sat on it. We had to sit on it until the economy was ready to pick up. But then when it did pick up, we were the only business in town. And then that moved up and down uh, Route 376. If you look around, I mean, we, these private developers can't build these places quick enough. They're rented, <laughs> leased, or sold once the foundations are put in. It, it, it's just incredible. And it's not just in one community. You go up and down 376 quarter, and you'll see. Uh, they tore my favorite drive-in down and put up almost 300 uh, apartments or condos. And, uh, and I think before those condos were completed, they were all leased or sold. Mm. <coughs> um, at 11.30 this morning, Governor Wolf is going to deliver the state budget, his sort of state of the state, and his budget plan for the uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Commissioners, what would you like to see or not see in the governor's proposals today that would be helpful to Beaver County. Anything in particular? Well, the impact fee is important to municipalities. Uh, if he's going to try and change that law, I think he, he has to retain the impact fees because he, he said, or the initial reports are that he would call for a severance tax, mm -hmm. but without replacing the the impact fee would remain in oh, place. I'd be fine with as long as the open. impact fee remains. Would you support a severance tax on uh, natural gas? Well, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Dale? Uh, I'm going to answer your first question. <laughs> uh, there, of course, there's two things. More money for behavior health and, and children use services. Commissioner Dale said before, that's one of our top priorities. And the second is more funding for the elect election voting machines. As we all know, this is an unfunded mandate. It's going to cost anywhere between $1 million and $3 million. We have 129 precincts in Beaver County with 457 machines. So, you know, this is a large cost to Beaver County. And, and right now, we're only receiving around $163,000 to fund this $3 million 
unfunded projects. So I know the governor is looking for money or, and, and there's looking, but this is something we need because this is just gonna be a burden on the taxpayers for something that we have, our election machines are still have life to them. And, and, and for us to get rid of them for no reason, I don't wanna say no reason. But do you have a paper trail for your? Uh... No. no. Well, some will argue that a paper trail is a really good reason. If we go back to paper ballots, we'll have a paper trail. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> so, more money for the for the uh, election machines is probably the, the key thing that we're going to be looking for for, for the budget address today. Mr. Agley, what would you like to hear the governor say? If I had five minutes, I'd ask him to pull out his checkbook and give us $3 million for those election <laughs> machines. Yeah. That's what I would, yeah, that's my uh, Are you getting any word that that's going to happen? Or any money at all? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Yeah. I don't know. All right. You hear rumors, but you hear rumors, but you don't know. I mean, it's it's what actually happens. So, what's the a different different question? Let me ask you about public transportation in Beaver County. Sort of in the news. What are you hearing? What's the biggest objection that you hear about public transportation in uh, Beaver County these days? And what are you going to do about it? Well, the biggest problem is change. People have a hard time accepting change. And we don't directly run the transit authority. Uh, it's, it's an authority. We appoint the members to the board. We met with them with their concerns, our concerns from our public, stating and telling them exactly what some of the concerns of the people are. But then it just becomes a dollars and cents and numbers thing. They had a hearing last night. I'm um, hearing rumors that they, they may make some changes uh, to accommodate some people, but we really won't know until they report back to us. Dan? Yeah. Change. Um, you know, I, I think one of the important things that everyone in the room should know is we offer Beaver County, you know, as we Beaver County offers a ride pretty much anywhere throughout Beaver County with our transit authority. There is change. There's going to be change. Instead of having two buses run to Pittsburgh at 6.20 and 6.40 in the morning, they're going to condense. Instead of having 15 people on each bus, we're going to have 30 on, each, on one bus. Um, but there is at no point a time where anyone cannot get from Beaver County to the city of Pittsburgh. That, that is still there with the, the Port Authority. They could, bring, they could come from the Port Authority down to Ambridge and get a bus from Ambridge to wherever they need to be in Beaver County. So as Commissioner Amadeo said, it's changed. It, it, it's, it hasn't been changed. Their routes haven't been changed since 2003. So eventually this was going to happen, and, and it's more cost effective for them to be able to do this. Well, I only know what I see on TV, and I know better than to believe it all. <laughs> But there were a lot of unhappy people at that meeting. Yeah. And, and the concern about getting into downtown Pittsburgh was one of those concerns. John, our county is going through a, a lot of change. We have six to 7,000 workers from Shell being bused everywhere throughout the county. We have a lot of organizations that are building very large companies. Traffic is changing, and we have to change with it. And if you, if people think that this is bad, you got to buckle your seat because this is this is one of those things that the county is going to change, and it's going to change rapidly. And if we don't adjust to that, we're going to lose opportunities. You look at CCBC; they recognize that Shell is here. They turned their entire curriculum to, to look at the changing climate, and now they're succeeding. They're just blowing the lid off of every other community college in the, in the region. So you have to welcome the change, and, and if you have a problem with it, which we received, and we were inundated with, with letters, with calls, and, and in some of those cases, that we were changing it you have to, if your bus came at 6.30, they were going to pick you up at 6.15. That's not a big deal. I mean, it, there's a lot worse things that can happen. So you're still getting into Pittsburgh. You still can come home. Um, and, and some of those smaller routes, they have dart buses. All you have to do is call. They'll come pick you up at your house. So there, there's a lot of things that I think get overblown. And if you stop and think about it, you can make this work because it has to fit the majority of the county residents, not just a select few. 
Great. Thank you. I, I appreciate those comments. Let me segue from public transportation into the transportation needs in general. What do you see as the greatest concern for those of us who are driving our vehicles around Beaver County? What do you see as the most significant challenge coming up in 2019 with respect to transportation? Yeah. <laughs> each want to defer to each other. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I think you know, in 2019, with, with the influx of, of workers coming and, and the buses traveling, you're going to see specific areas throughout Beaver County be a little more congested. Yeah. But I think this is just the thing where people have to sit back, plan their trip, plan their, their trip to work, and, and be a little more patient. I, I don't think we're going to see any major problems, but you just have to have patience and, and, and realize that at the end of the day, this is something that's better for Beaver County. These workers are coming in. These, the majority of the workers live in Beaver County. If not, they're coming in Beaver County. They might spend their money in Beaver County. So at the end of the day, we just have to have patience and be able to, you know, be able to plan, plan, do a review. So if you have to be at work at 8:15 and you usually leave at 8, I mean, you might have to leave at 8:45. So. And don't try and buy a tie or shirt at five o'clock at the mall. Yeah. <laughs> And I live a half a mile from the mall. Once those buses start rolling, it, it's incredible. I, I still, I'd like to know who's in charge of the logistics of getting all those workers to and from their job. Because that person, whatever he or she is being paid, it's not enough. <laughs> uh, we only have about seven or eight minutes, so I want to ask Sandy Egley, who is not running for re-election, and who had some very interesting comments to make at the beginning of this. Um, corruption. Is there corruption in Beaver County government? Do you want to get specific? Do uh, you want to tell us more? Is the problem solved? I hear the whisper in the crowd, and that's exactly what you know, I figured would happen. Um, I, can't, I can't talk a lot about the things that, that are happening, um, but uh, you, it's well documented in the paper. It, it really is. It's well documented. You, you, you can read it. It's out there. They, they set the stones and all you have to do is walk across them. It's, it's pretty evident. Well, you use strong words. I mean, you're accusing government of being an old, it was an old boys club. Is oh, it still that? Oh, yeah. It, well, it is. It is. I mean, um, is this why you're not running you for re Yeah, oh, sorry, go it ahead. is. It is a reason why I'm not running um, for election. Um, yeah, this is not what I thought it was going to be. Um, I ran with a team, and um, the, the, it just didn't work out. Um, that's as polite as I can be. So I, I, I'm not that I'm not proud of what we've done. I am. I am very grateful for the opportunity, and I think that we've done the very best that we can under the circumstances. Well, let me ask your colleague, because they certainly have a right to respond. Is there corruption in Beaver County government from your perspectives? Throughout our courthouse, like the government itself, are you talking about Beaver County in general? Because I think a lot of things that people think, that when they read things, they think it's specifically under the commissioners or in our courthouse when uh, there may be corruption outside of our courthouse. But with that being said, I don't believe there is. There's things that aren't getting done the right way that the Board of Commissioners has to take responsibility and act upon. But I also believe that we came into a lot of a different situation as a new board, the three of us. And whenever, as, of my, as I stated earlier, we reacted and didn't govern. And, and that's something we're trying to get back to. We sat here last year and talked about corruption. That is not our job. We're not crime fighters. I'm not the sheriff. I'm not the DA. I'm not the local municipality police. I'm a county commissioner. At the end of the day, if they need correspondence from the commissioners, our doors are always open. And we'll work with them day in and day out. But right now, that's not what we're focused on. That's not what I'm focused on as a county commissioner, is to fight corruption and discuss it. So. Um, if, if, there's, if there's corruption, I hope our law enforcement are, are fighting it, and if they need our help, our doors are open. But to be clear, as far as you're concerned, as the chair of the Board of County Commissioners, there's no, no corruption in those areas where you have responsibility, as far as you can tell. No. Tony, did you want to add not, to not to the best of my knowledge. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty proud of our workers. Uh, they do a great job. I've never been a micromanager. 
Uh, I respect what my department heads tell me. Uh, I don't always agree, or sometimes I disagree. Uh, this board disagrees a lot, an awful lot. I mean, but at least we agree to disagree. As far as corruption, I keep hearing that all the time, but identify exactly what you're talking about. I, I mean, there's no way for me to even address a concept without any particulars. Okay, and I guess, Commissioner Engel, you, you don't want to get too specific. I can't. No, I can't. And why can't you? you oh my God. Just to be clear. There are ongoing investigations. Uh, it's not normal to go up to the state police. It's not normal to go to the FBI. It's not normal to talk to the Attorney General's office in my position. It's just not normal. And you've done all of that? Yes. And that's as far as you'll share with us right now? Yeah. Okay. Final question. As we move forward in Beaver County this year, what excites you the most? What are you really, what really grabs you about what's happening in this county and the growth and development that you think is really positive? You may mention the casino again, which you're free to do, but is there something that really makes you feel hopeful and excited about where Beaver County is going, the state of Beaver County in 2019? Um, I passed the Cracker Plant four times a day, and every, each and every time I pass the cracker plant, I see something different. It, it, it's phenomenal. I mean, I again, I thought when they were building the basic oxygen plant when I was a kid was a big deal. This is a big, big deal. I remember when we first started talking about it, it was a $3 billion project. And now it's a $6 million billion project. I mean, when it's all said and done, God only knows how much this thing's going to cost. I remember hearing that they, they, were, they put a billion dollars in the ground, just in remediation and, and pipes. And, I mean, that's incredible. Who would have thought in Beaver County that we would get to the point where we don't have enough people to fill jobs that are available? And, and, and I want to say this before I finish. Shell told us when we were negotiating with them that they would hire Beaver County first. And they did. And you can ask any of the union trades, and they'll tell you they're following through with that. They've been following through with that. Beaver County's first, the region's second, and then after that, they have to go get where they have to go. I mean, there are some special professional specialties that they do have to go down south for, and that's fine. I mean, we're in a process, we're, we're both on. We, we, we're members of CLEO, which is nine commissioners from uh, three county uh, counties in the southwest corner of, of Beaver County. And the programs, uh, Amy Gatz is here, and the, the girl's phenomenal. I mean, she, she talks, and, and sometimes I get lost with all the programs and, and all the monies that are filtering down from the federal government and the state government to, to not only help with our apprenticeship programs, but to help the kids to get to those apprenticeship programs, the pre-apprenticeship programs, to teach them the math that's germane to carpentry, to teach them the math that's germane to, to be an electrician. Those are specialty maths that we want to make sure that all people are inclusive on. We have to make sure that all our children in Beaver County have the equal chance of getting one of those um, jobs. And that, that's so important. You know, I, most of you know that I come from the educational field. I, I was a, a teacher. And I saw a lot of kids get passed by simply because of the way they were raised or simply because they didn't have a parent at home making them do their algebra or making them study their history. And we have to be able to accommodate those students to make sure that they have the ability to learn, to learn the skills, to learn the skills to become a craftsman. I, I'm really I'm glad you mentioned that the educational side because it does seem to me we did this. Uh, I KBK did this. Yeah. I on Beaver County, and we had 
all these union representatives talk about the training programs that are going on in this region related to the cracker plan and others. And, and thank you, Tony, for raising that. It's really good. What excites you, Dan, about uh, Beaver County as we move forward in 2019? Well, we could, as Commissioner Davis said, talked about the Cracker Plan and the casino, but I think what we have to focus on is it's exciting because we have a potential to prosper off of the industries that are finally here and or coming to Beaver County. And if we don't, we don't maximize our opportunity on that, we're going to fail. So one of the things we have to focus on is, is doing that. Uh, you know, we have a lot of other development going on in Beaver County. Um, we have, a, a, for instance, we have a trucking company that's going to be developing a multi-million dollars in the Ambridge Borough. Um, you know, they chose to stay in Beaver County because we have opportunity here. And, and when we look forward to that, and, and we, have to be able to, uh, we have to be able to take advantage of that. Um, but one of the things I think I look forward to doing is continuing to work for the residents of Beaver County. You know, we talked about debt services earlier. Um, Beaver County does have more debt than everyone, but because of the leadership that we had prior to this board, we have new human services buildings. We have a new courthouse. We have a new 911 center. We have a new park. We, we have new shelters at parks. Those things cost money. These other counties, they don't have that. So they're gonna be gaining debt here sooner or later because they're gonna need these new facilities. So I think one of the things that I look forward to is continuing to grow Beaver County and, and the potential to prosper that we have. So, I really love your courthouse, by the way. I think you have one of the best in the in the whole region when it comes to uh, you know facilities. And, and I'm not working there, so I, I'm sure there's some things, there's some issues. But from the outsider's point of view, it certainly is a beautiful structure. Sandy Angley, you're going to get the last word. What what do you what excites you most about Beaver County in 2019? I think that this is the year where we are going to have a lot of families recognize that we have growing schools. They want to come here to, to raise their family. They want to come back home. We offer a safe uh, towns. We offer great housing, walkable streets. I mean, you look at these downtown streets and people are just flocking to them and having dinner on the sidewalk and, and talking with your friends and grabbing a Starbucks and riding your bike to Pizza Joe's. And that's who we are. And we are not going to change that. We have to make sure that we put business where business belongs and keep our cobblestone streets and our concerts in the park at the gazebo where it belongs because we're, we're an attractive place to live, and people are starting to recognize that. And they're coming in and buying homes and raising their families. So I think that we should really concentrate on what those types of people need. So they want bike trails. I mean, I was with a, with a hotel group of um, all the hotels in Beaver County, and they said their number one request for people that are staying there are bike trails walking trails, and I think we should really pay attention to what they're saying. It always comes back to people, and I think it's a tremendous that we, it's always been my experience that there are great people here in Beaver County, including our three commissioners. How about a round of applause for the <laughs> Mary, I'm Thank you, John, for another excellent job and uh, a lively discussion. Feel free to stick around and do some more networking. After all, that's what chamber events are for. Enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you enjoy the program.